I'm talking with a patient about clinical research, I start out by saying, we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna take care of you whether you choose to participate in this research or we can use the standard care that we use every day. And this is gonna be your option. I was diagnosed three years ago. I really didn't tell everyone how bad my vision was starting to get because I was still traveling back and forth on my own and I didn't want them to worry. I was um, told I had some cataracts and then I was complaining that I could have like spots in my vision and um, I felt like there was something there when I would rub my eye, it wouldn't go away. I wasn't seeing everything clearly and I, even signs out on the road, I, I couldn't tell them until we got close enough to him. So when we came to Dr. Brown and he said, I think you would be a perfect candidate for a study that we've been doing, they asked Rick and you know, he looks at me and I look at him and I said, go for it. I'm a very helping person. My parents adopted me, um, church, you know, so helping is kind of, I guess, in my blood. So when, when I found out I could help other people, it was kind of more of a push. <laughs> People fear being in studies, they fear being taken advantage of, they fear being experimented on. Our mission is to take care of everyone regardless of their economic status or where they come from, what they look like, regardless of their ability to pay. I personally take more time talking to patients than examination because examination can be quick, but to have to explain to patients what, they, what we are dealing with and what they're dealing with and also to involve their caretakers and family members is very important. By me having diabetes was playing a part on my eyesight, so I wanted to learn more about that. And each time I would come, he would explain the different diagnoses and the treatments that I needed to have to reduce some of the inflammation and uh, that was in my eyes. The informed consent process, the education process for enrollment in a study is extremely lengthy and multi-layered and you can't skip any layers or else you've basically done the patient a service. You have to give them the full scope of, the, of what you're offering them and what the risks are. Clinical trials are all about trust. They're about communication. They're about motivation. And those are the things we have to make sure we get across to anyone across the entire diverse spectrum. I think one of the important things about being inclusive in research is showing up in the community. And it's not about showing up one time and never coming back. It's being there continuously. I think trust needs to start before the patient sees the physician. It has to start from the moment they have their first contact with the organization. When I came in to visit with Dr. Wagner, and uh, Dr. Kapoor, this guy made me feel like I was the only one person existed for them. They, were, they treat me so well, they were so nice to me. I think the whole thing that was worried me about it the most, that was how much that was going to cost me and all of that, and I was worried about that. We take care of people regardless of race, creed, color, background, wealth. We're there to help people. If we're going to be true to our mission statement, advancing inclusive research has to be part of it. So to patients, when you're there with the doctor, don't be afraid to ask questions. There are no silly questions. Without patients, there's no new clinical studies. Without new clinical studies, there's no new drugs. And without new drugs, we can't bridge the gap with health disparities that we have in our community. I wish I would have known how important it was for me to take better care of myself, my eyesight, and just general problems that I have had with diabetes and high blood pressure. I'm very appreciative that I got to be in the study. Hey, I can do it, you can do it. This is, it's just little changes in life. Fix the biggest thing. <laughs>